Chest Diagnostic. Hello everyone. Imagine for a second that you're an 11-year-old boy playing against a 2600, almost 2700 gram master. And as black, you only have one move to stay in this game. And you actually end up winning this game. What would you do? Before we get to an answer of that position, we're going to look at the whole game. This is a game played at the Reykjavik Open between an 11-year-old I am, the youngest in the world, Prognananda, and Gawain Jones, an English grandmaster who's rated 2671. Uh, I was recently at the Millionaire Chess Open and he actually got second place, so he's not playing badly at all recently. So it starts with d4, knight to f6, knight to f3, e6, and with bishop to g5 we get the tor attack after h6, where black is pretty much uh, trying to chase this bishop back, and it's a little unclear of where either player castles because wing attacks take precedence sometimes in the tor attack. So after d6, e3, we see just normal minor piece development, but after g5, the bishop is chased back, and black plans to win the bishop pair. A simple plan, but of course, the drawback is that these pawns can become weak, and if black plans to castle kingside, he's subjected to a kingside assault by white. So of course, black is just developing minor pieces as well as white, and there's kind of a game of cat and mouse in the center to determine where to castle and where to place his pieces for an attack. So the knight takes the bishop, but of course that gives white a semi-open file. So white has a semi-open file, but black has the bishop pair and can put pressure on the dark squares. So of course black is trying to weaken the center with, D, uh, with c5, putting pressure on d4, and trying to open up this position here for his bishops. So with g4, this pawn's a little weak, but it prevents black from playing h5. And now we just see kind of a game of cat and mouse, trying to develop pieces and figure out where to castle. So of course black doesn't take this pawn right away, he wants to keep developing. But notice that if white plays b4, that's a big mistake because the knight can take and then put pressure along the dark squares. For example, here, and now black is threatening along uh, this diagonal. So we don't get that line, of course, but white forces a trade of a bishop because the knight's trying to come to b6, so he has to take it. He wins his pawn back, but black is left with some weaknesses on the king side. Jones closes off the dark squares with c3 with this pawn formation. And now black is basically forced to castle king side and undergo a king side assault. After f4, there's really nothing he could do to stop it. Although black could have played a little more aggressively with bringing his queen up to c5 or even taking on f4 but we don't see that instead we see black try to consolidate his position but after the bishop moves back the queen moves forward black is forced to bring a piece back and then after f5 there's some pressure that's starting to mount Black could have played bishop to f6, trying to prevent the pawn from moving forward, but he's still having some problems with trying to get active, and now this e6 square is starting to become a problem. So the bishop is chased back, and now black's activity has been reduced, but white makes some mistakes by moving his queen back, he should have just played e4, trying to break down the position even further and mounting even more pressure, and black probably would have eventually crumbled, but we don't see that. We see queen to d1, a mistake, of course, because it reduces white's activity, as well as doesn't really make any threats. Of course, he wants to reroute his queen to f3, 
but this allows black to regroup his pieces and win a pawn because this pawn is actually weak. So after queen to d8, threatening the pawn, queen to f3, the knight comes in and now the rook tries to pin the knight, but black can take anyway. And now actually black has an advantage here. So after the knight moves back, black has just won a clean pawn and even though white has some pressure, things start to fall apart. But black does make some mistakes, just playing a little bit passively uh, with this bishop move. Threatening the rook here. Moves his queen back. Now he's threatening the knight. The knight takes the bishop. And at this point, Jones could have gone for a draw. Just a repetition here. And it looks like Prague Nananda was actually going for that, but Jones decides to make things more complicated, which is to his detriment in the end. So Black is able to increase his activity. And after this pawn trade, now his rooks are able to penetrate. <clears throat> so he gave his pawn back but you can see that black is actually going to increase his activity. Uh, now, white actually has an advantage here, but it's not very much. And at this point, it's practically equal. But Jones, again, tries to complicate things by sacrificing a rook. Now, the rook should have just taken on e6, and then he had latent threats of bringing the bishop because the king and the queen were in line. But he makes a mistake by bringing the bishop here first, which allows black to invade with his doubled rooks. So the only move in this position, which was the original position we looked at, if you want to pause it, you can try to solve it. But the only move that keeps black in the game with an advantage is rook from eight to c5, threatening the queen. Now, of course, the queen could take, but with black's active rooks, he's going to win some pawns and cause a lot of threats and most likely win. So white is planning to take on e6 and pin the queen, but it doesn't work out in time. And white's king is actually quite weak with his, with his rooks here, as well as the queen threatening to come over on this diagonal. So at this point, we get queen check, and now he's forced to move the pawn forward, but of course, that further work weakens white's own king. The queen comes back to threaten check here, and now notice that the rook is actually pinned to the bishop. The queen comes back, but Jones must have miscalculated because after queen takes e6, the queen cannot check on f3, because if it does, then we actually get rook here. And now there's no check for the queen. If the queen takes, then actually after rook to b1, he's going to win a pawn and he's up in exchange. Whereas if the pawn takes, then we actually get a rook up and white is totally lost. So Jones missed this line and he plays queen to f2, which is losing anyway because after the king moves forward, if the bishop takes, we simply pin the queen, win an exchange, plus some pawns, and it's lost. So actually at this point, king to e7, white resigned, and an 11-year-old IM just beat one of the strongest grandmasters in the world. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to like and subscribe for future videos and leave a comment if you have any questions or comments on the game. I'll see you in the future.